Let's do a meditation that I do quite often because it's, its intention is to, first of all, come to this place of stillness and just see our attempts with our agendas to get something out of the next moment. So, yeah, if we, we've got about, you know, five, ten minutes. If we just kind of end this, especially if you're at home, I think it'd be great to introduce you to what I tend to do at the start of each sitting, which is just to become aware of any agendas that we have on this moment. Because many of us, you know, we feel as though, you know, oh, I'm accepting the moment, I'm being present, but really we don't have to worry about that. We can just allow ourselves to be agitated or to be happy or to be sad, whatever we want to label it as. And just to first of all, allow that to be. And I want to become more sensitive of any agendas we have on this moment. And by agendas, it could be, you know, I want to be closer to enlightenment. Or I want this person to perceive me in a certain way. I want a validation from another person. Or I want to control the situation in some way, some aspect of control. So we want to find anywhere that we're kind of with a closed fist and we're, we're, we're holding on, whether it's a bodily sensation, it could be a very visceral, physical thing, it could be a belief. I want to appear a certain way, I want to get something. What we're looking for is the place within us that can't lose or gain. There's a place within us that doesn't know of validation because it doesn't know of others. There's a place within us that doesn't need anything more because it sees it's never lost anything. Now the body will usually be saying something different, even if we can logically see this. The body may have a resistance in it. The body may have certain emotions, certain places of agitation. Really, it can feel quite solid. And if we're to actually look into this, a lot of us don't realize that we're subtly resisting the body, perceived sense of the body, even if we think we're accepting it. Usually there's a subtle resistance. So put the attention on this body. And this can be done anywhere. I really recommend on public transport or in the shower, when you're eating, when you're with friends, when you're meditating, whatever it is. And just to allow whatever sensation is there to stay within you as if it was to stay for the rest of your life without leaving. And this is the greatest test of an agenda is, am I just feeling this in order for it to go? Or could I let this stay forever? Treat it like a guest at your dinner party and it's at the table. Because each of these sensations has a voice and they want to say something, but we keep pushing them away and telling them to leave. But really this, this fear or this, these sensations, I mean, fear really is just resisted love. All of these sensations are just positive. What you are looking for in the positivity is actually found right at the heart of each negative emotion. Each negative feeling is holding the key to, to that. To the point where I remember I would just become so okay with something staying, you always miss it when it leaves. Like if we go into each flavor, for example, grief, it's actually quite lovely to feel grief. Fear, it makes you feel alive when you really let it stay. Don't resist joy, even happiness. Allow that to stay. And in, in this, you may start to see there's a self that seems to spring up as if there's a self that is happy or a self that is sad but really these feelings are not feelings belonging to a self but the feelings of self what we're releasing is not emotions belonging to a separate individual but the feeling of separateness that hides in the body these emotions are just feeling like you're separate fear makes you feel as though the world is more real Grief makes it feel like there's a self with something to lose. But we come to this place of just being grounded in the body, noticing subtly the sensations, 
and gently releasing that resistance. What we're releasing really is the sense of self. The most simple practice is just to listen to the moment without an agenda. Even if it's not to do with the body, even if it's just beliefs or thoughts, can we turn up to the present moment without any agenda to change it? We can't even have an agenda to remove the agendas. You just have to turn up without a sword or a shield and really let go without a plan, without a map. You can take this into any workplace, any job, any family situation, a date or a friendship group. Just turn up without a plan. Let yourself get lost. Because no one's ever found truth with a map or a set of instructions. It's really at the depths of letting go of finding your way. So yeah, this was just like a, I think this is a great way just to start. Then you could go into inquiry. You could then go into, you know, whatever you're usually doing, but coming from a place of no agenda um, and releasing that resistance to the body, really, because where we suffer is never in thought. It's thoughts are just mental images. It's the resistances in the body, really, where I find, you know, we're actually feeling that repression, feeling that resistance, you know.